my name is Bob Gamble and I'm the uh, go-kart guru and today we are doing a reassembly of the engine that we took apart before what you'll see here is a crankshaft that we took the taper off of I had it sent over to a CNC machine place and they buzzed it down I actually had it done for very cheaply uh, less than thirty dollars to get that to happen so what we need to do now is reassemble the engine and because we disassembled it there are several things that we need to take care of our uh, head gasket got trashed so we bought a new head gasket so we'll show prep on how to get that surface ready um, we did not take the piston out so that's one thing that we're not going to worry about uh, reassembling the piston into the uh, um, the engine so from let's get going on this and when we come back we'll have started doing prep work on the uh, the head here pulling off the head gasket cut okay what I'm doing here is taking a razor blade to the the where the where the um, head gasket was and we're taking off the material with it we're being careful not to scrape the surface we don't want to scrape it because that causes ir irregularities and can cause leaks which means loss of power okay feel it with your finger make sure everything's flattened and leveled go around it now we're going to vacuum a little vacuum and it's going to get a little loud for a second turn on we want to make sure we vacuum every little bit of this okay so now we have that set up we're going to clean the work area up a little bit Okay, what I'm doing here is just kind of wiping some of the excess oil so we don't have a big, huge mess. As you can see, all this black crap in the corner, that's really the kind of residue you want to get rid of. So we're kind of cleaning that out. If you want to get real picky, you can get a, uh, you know, a Q-tip, but we're not getting that picky. We're just rebuilding this engine. Um, it has a few hours on it, but not a whole lot of hours on it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is pull the uh, camshaft out. We don't need that. This We just placed all this stuff in there from before. Next thing we're going to do here is put the crankshaft in. Okay, so we got to pull off these caps. Now, the key to understanding how it's taking this apart is that you take it apart correctly. We don't want to end up turning this around. you got to really remember how it came apart. So we look for telltale signs. Number one sign is the dipper. The dipper is down. That's one big key we want the dipper down when we put it back together okay so i'm pulling this cap off we are very careful on how we took this this connecting rod off to begin with so we didn't want to pull the, the head out pull the i mean the piston out of the block because it it just ends up being more of a mess in the end okay so now what we want to do put this on the side we're going to take our crankshaft and we're going to put it in now I need the, the WD-40 somebody was going to get for me okay. and we're going to spray the journals of everything with it okay this one thing as you notice I'm putting this in backwards the key, the, this part's got to go on that way so I sprained the wrong end but it's okay spray this part this is where the it's going to fit in the block so we'll spray in there now we're going to fit this in gently make it clear it's kind of a, a balancing act here trying to clear everything see how the crankshaft and the connecting rod are clearing each other you can slowly very carefully feed it in there without dinging anything okay now part of the problem is that our piston is down 
and we have it down too far so we're going to have to pull this out and push this up as high as we can get it without allowing it to come out so you put your hand on the top like this not allowing it to go past otherwise you've got a problem so now push it to the side make sure I didn't just bung it up bad feed it in Here's the problem. If you take a look, it's trying to push that seal out. I really run into this before, but you try to get the seal around like this, and you can take a credit card or even a screwdriver like this and tuck it around there. Because what's happening is the seal is trying to push in the opposite direction. Seal is important, very important. for keeping the oil in. There we go. Okay. You usually hear a pop. Okay. Now we got the crankshaft where we want it. Here's the next We're trick. going to push the connecting rod on there with my thumb while I'm pushing down to get this lined up. Okay. Now it should fit in there decently. And it's probably turned just a little bit. There, you should hear that snap, okay? We're gonna spray some WD-40 in there. We're gonna spray WD-40 on this part. And then we're gonna push this down more so we can get at it with a wrench, okay? Now we're sliding that in. Now, the key to this is not just screwing this in because that's not how it's going to happen. I'm just going to put it in to keep it in place. We're going to take this one out. We're going to clean it off. This is an important step right here. We're going to clean it off. And then we are going to put some Loctite on it. Okay, what we have here is lock threader 242. Hopefully we got enough in this thing. It's been a while since I've used this. Now what lock tight is, it's like a super glue, but it's not a super glue. It's, it's like it. And it's designed to keep threads from loosening up. So you basically put it on the threads, on the base of the threads here. And then we're going to put it in here. And the reason why we put WD-40 on everything is so that when you put this thread locker in there it doesn't kill and lock up the connecting rod. Now we want to get this one in pretty quickly. We can push this down a little bit. Get at it with our hand. Okay. We're not going to tighten this down, we're just kind of snugging it. I need enough room for my wrench. Okay. I'm going to treat this one with thread locker. Again, we clean off the threads. Now you may be asking why am I putting thread locker on there? There wasn't any on there when they put it together. The reason why, and I didn't show a picture of this, but on the bottom of the the head of the the bolt is serrations, but that might not be enough, especially for this one up here, to hold this thing from coming apart. 
So we want some extra insurance when we're riding this thing that it's not going to come flying apart. I've had an engine come apart because they didn't have the connecting rods set up correctly. In my opinion, these connecting rods are not, that's not a good method to just have serrations under the head because that's not enough. The engine, the engine heats up and that can come apart. Okay. Now, technically, you should be using a, um, what you would call a torque wrench. Okay. But the approximate load that's going on here is about nine foot pounds. So that's about as much as a thumb, a hefty thumb can pull. It's almost, it feels like it's almost too, like you're getting ready to strip it. That's about how tight it's gotta be. Okay? So that's the step for the connecting rod. We make sure everything spins good. Might not spin as well as we'd like. Make sure that's spinning. 